I'm going to talk to you about autism and communication and how we need to try, try and try again. It's a complicated old thing and you have to keep trying. But as we try, we will make mistakes and we spend a lot of time trying to avoid making mistakes because when we do, sometimes it leads us feeling awkward or embarrassed and that doesn't feel very comfortable. So we spend a lot of time trying not to make mistakes and yet we know that making mistakes is a part of life. We also know that making mistakes is a natural part of learning. And it's important that we carry that understanding with us every day in our work with the children. So for example, on a, cause of a fitness bend, I join the gym, okay, and I'm going to Zumba, all right? And I go to Zumba for three weeks, and it's a real struggle because I'm going the wrong way, or I can either do the arms or the legs, but not both together. And actually, I find I'm going to Zumba um, increasingly uncertain about whether I'm going to stick with it or whether I'm going to give it up. And I thought, this is ridiculous. I'm going to relax and enjoy it. And I'm going to stop worrying about whether I make a mistake. And actually, it started to be a lot more fun. I started to enjoy it. I do stand at the back. Why would you want to be in the front with all the smart Lycra people? Okay, but I'm at the back and occasionally I'm leaping while they're swaying, but we're okay and I feel okay about it and I'm okay about trying it. But also I am aware that I don't do the whooping and the shouting that the instructor would like me to do in one of the tracks. Because if I was whooping when everybody else was sidestepping, I would feel very exposed. So I'm also aware that even though I've decided it's okay to make mistakes, that my confidence runs out at a certain point because I don't feel okay about making that sort of mistake in front of a room of 70 people. Not yet, but maybe I might. So here you can see the teacher is very skilled. She's getting all her chocolatey crispies in the paper case. Perhaps she's done baking many times before. Perhaps she's done spooning things many times before. She's had lots of experience. But the little boy next to her has made some mistakes. There are crispies spread about a bit and one or two have not made it to the paper case. But here we are. Here are some more children trying this exercise and perhaps they too are making mistakes, but we're okay about it. We know that if they keep trying, they'll get better at it. We accept for the children that making mistakes is a part of learning and providing we hold that idea close, making mistakes becomes okay. And it's important because the way we deal with mistakes affects whether making mistakes is a natural part of learning and allows us to practice and get better at something, or whether making mistakes becomes a barrier to our learning, where we become anxious about trying it in case we get it wrong, where we become fearful of trying something new in case we look silly or where we begin to back away from new experiences because we worry that we will fail and be judged for it. It's a tough call. We are only human. But in our work with children with autism, it's really important <laughs> that we begin to develop this idea put forward by this wonderful uh, woman, Carol Dweck. And she says, we need to develop a really alive idea about it's not a failure, it's just we don't know how to do it yet. And some of the children don't know how to communicate successfully yet. And that means we can move forward. 
It gives us license to keep trying because we are very attracted to the idea that people who are brilliant are just brilliant without even trying. You know that he ran so fast when he could run, he beat all his friends. Actually, if you want to win a gold medal in running, you need to run a lot, you need to run a lot of races, you need a coach, you need a mentor, you need a dietitian, you need a manager, you need a PA, you need a sports psychologist, you need a team, and that entire team is working to make the running better. And you're going to have to run a lot of races that you don't win. And you've got to have the confidence to get up and have another go. And that is quite a big ask. And it can feel like a lonely place if you've been trying and you haven't had very many wins. And it can begin to feel like a failure. Because if you are going to try something new, you are increasing the risk of making mistakes. And we can have no doubt about that at all. And it's hard to go on finding the courage to keep trying sometimes. Because how we feel, whether we feel confident, whether we feel anxious, whether we feel safe in the place where we're working or living, these make a big difference. But it's easier if you're enjoying your work. And we're looking very much at making the work Engaging, fascinating, joyful. It's so much easier to work hard if you like what you're doing. And for sure, the work is going to be hard at times. And we really need to enjoy it because it's much easier to turn up and have another go if it was fun the last time. Fun for us, fun for the child, fun for anybody you want to try the work with. So we want this fabulous formula. Engagement plus effort plus practice equals successful learning. Whether that is tying your shoelaces, cooking a three-course meal, or learning how to communicate. There is no magic answer. Children who are developing typically seem to do it as if by magic, but actually they're practicing every day. They're practicing every day with the people around them. This is what we need to create around the children who are struggling to learn how to communicate. And we will make mistakes. This activity went so well, made a terrible mess. The next time we did it, we made mopping up a part of the activity. And this attitude applies to all of us. The professionals, we need to feel we can try and fail sometimes. We need to be able to say to parents, I'm going to try. If it doesn't work, I'll try again. And if that doesn't work, I will try again after that. For parents, it's much harder. You may need help to keep trying. It's okay. Ask people to show you. Ask people to join your team. And if you're the child, you need to see that we too fail and we survive to live another day and have another go. Our attitude to failure is very convincing to the children. If we make it a problem, it will be a problem for them. If we can bounce back and have another go, they stand a much better chance. Let's remember to have a laugh. You do need a sense of humour. And let's respect the fact that this is not going to be quick. It's going to take time. It's going to take effort. It's not just one marathon. It's multiple <laughs> marathons. And that requires courage. And we need to create a safe space where we can run these daily experiments around the child so that they learn to communicate as best they possibly can. So let's go out and have another go and see if we can keep on trying. Thank you.